Yo people, welcome back to another video. Now, Ahsoka episode 7 is out and I'm going to say straight away that I think this was one of the, how do we say this, least good episodes of the season. It doesn't mean it was bad, I still enjoyed it personally and if anything it highlights how good the other episodes have been. For me it was just very straightforward, very pushed the plot very quickly, pretty much advanced everything really quick apart from Balin's perspective which I think should have got something at least, even if it was one minute at the end. I think it crammed in a lot of fighting and there was a lot of hopping around from one scene to another. However, it sets up all the final pieces where they need to be for the finale, which I don't mind. I think there's a lot of beefing on social media as well about this episode and I'll make a whole different video on that probably. But the end goal of this season for me was Thrawn escaping this galaxy and they've set it up perfectly for that. I feel like fans have deluded themselves into thinking there would be some set in stone ending where all the heroes live happily ever after. This would definitely end on a cliffhanger or on a major L for the good guys. There has been a lot of meltdown and I don't really want to entertain all of that right now. For me, I'm just going to mention the good stuff. We'll start with the C-3PO cameo and just hearing Leia being named as well with the C-3PO cameo. They've been kind of hinting at seeing Leia at some point. Maybe we see her in an end credit, who knows? It's the second time they've mentioned her, and the fact that she saved Hera, who is already a general, shows how much Leia's influence matters and how high up she is within this new republic. This was one of the few moments in this episode where we got the slow dialogue scene, and to be honest, I didn't really care for it because I don't like the new republic, so if Hera got kicked out, I couldn't care less, and this Probably a good thing for her character with all the corruption happening in the New Republic. For the rest of the episode after the Hera scene at the beginning, the episode jumped around a lot, which could have been a lot to take in for some people, but it was because Thrawn really put the pressure on and he really had his time to develop and to shine as a villain and as a strategist. As I said before, of course Thrawn knew where Ezra was, and a lot of fans are calling Thrawn stupid or just saying that it was woke that Sabine finds Ezra but Thrawn couldn't, which is BS in my opinion. Thrawn just wanted to set up Ezra as his insurance policy in order to distract the heroes, which is why he sent Sabine there. Think of it, just for a second, think. Why would he capture Ezra, bring all the attention onto his ship when he's trying to leave? Instead, if he keeps tabs on Ezra from above and sends any allies of his down there, and pretends he hasn't seen him, then he can contain all the threats, know of all their locations, if any of them die down there, that's a bonus, all while deflecting the attention off his ship, allowing for his getaway. I think it's a pretty straightforward plan, wouldn't you say? People need to trust the process a lot more. Also, those cargo things they're putting on Throne's ship, I think those are the dead Knight sisters. I think they're going to try to go to Dathomir, resurrect all of them. I think they're going to try and restart their whole race. There's no way Thrawn is getting everything for free. He's getting the service. He's getting the five-star reviews. Yes, my lord. Yes, Thrawn. As you wish, Thrawn. It's part of the bargain. He's getting help and he's going to help the Knight sisters in some way, shape or form. Another thing I liked, and this may be controversial, is the Ahsoka and Balin fight. I don't really think the choreography was that great, if I'm being honest, but the fact that it ended as a draw was what made me like it, because it would be very cringe if Ahsoka returns and kills Balin immediately. That just wouldn't be a thing. And I feel like people would then do the whole Mary Sue thing, blah, blah, you already know. Especially since they've been building Balin as this key powerful character. Balin will definitely go to what's calling him in the next episode anyway, unleash whatever it is that he has been summoned by, and I feel like it's going to be something that could act as a third party element to the finale, something that could be an inconvenience to everyone around. They won't just attack the good guys, it will just attack everyone. Now, we can't speak of Balin without mentioning Shin. She seemed very confused as to why Balin just sent her by herself and I feel like she feels used in order to buy him some time for something that she doesn't even know about. She looked pretty angry and kind of embarrassed that she got put in that situation at the end. They caused for her to flee, so I do think she will turn on him. But since she's basically in the middle, the question is, is she going to turn to the good side and be with Ahsoka? Which they kind of teased. Or would it be the dark side, purely just out of rage and hatred, that Balin has kind of turned his back on her? Thrawn, she doesn't really have a good connection with him, so 
Yeah, we'll wait and see. I personally hope it's the dark side route. I don't personally see how Balin survives this. I think he's definitely dying in the next episode due to Thrawn or that thing that has summoned him will betray him and just kill him off. I'm not sure how it will be, but I think he does. We'll move on to Ezra and his new found Kung Fu force abilities. I personally liked how unique of a thing it is. I know people are crying that he didn't use his lightsaber, but I guess he's damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. Think about it. He doesn't use it and the fans cry and they call it work because apparently they're keeping the lightsaber for Sabine. But if he uses the lightsaber and wipes out everyone, people would just say, oh, he doesn't deserve it. He's rusty. He hasn't used a lightsaber in nearly a decade. So again, he can't win. But for me personally, I enjoyed the Ezra stuff. I do have a theory that I'll make another video about Ezra. But yeah, overall, can't complain. Last but definitely not the least, Anakin as a hologram and Ahsoka training while playing the hologram. It's crazy to hear Hayden talk about Ventress and the Clone Wars stuff and it boosts Anakin's image further by knowing Ahsoka likes to play these recordings and she still uses them no matter how old she is, no matter how powerful she is. I personally think she went through a time period where she wasn't using it and it's why she kind of became disillusioned and frustrated as we saw in the earlier episodes. She hadn't forgiven herself for allowing Anakin to turn into the dark side and all of that so... I'm glad that she's kind of purified herself, kind of started fresh and kind of humbled herself a little bit. Overall, like I said, it was a decent episode. I'd probably give it a 6.5 out of 10 and this had to happen at some point. But I prefer the episodes that expand, reflect, they kind of have the dialogue. Like episodes 5 and 6. This was always going to be a tough act to follow as well, to be fair. Especially with those two episodes, which for me are the top two of this season so far. I also think... This episode may gain or lose points depending on the finale, so again, just trust the process, wait, this is a weekly thing, everything can't be solved immediately. So my predictions for the finale are, Thrawn escapes, Balin unleashes the threat which I think could be either the Zepho, Abeloth or the Mortis gods. Sabine uses the force, maybe if Ezra's in trouble she kind of connects even stronger because of her emotional attachment to Ezra. Balin dies, potentially one of our heroes gets left behind which I think would be either Ahsoka or maybe Sabine. It would be kind of like a sacrifice type of thing. Like I said before, I personally hope Shin turns evil but I think she'll turn good. The Republic will know and will physically see Thrawn return and it will create this whole panic mode kind of like the Ministry of Magic when they see Voldemort returns in the Order of the Phoenix. I still think we'll see Force Ghost Anakin, I'm hoping, because if not, then that's a wasted opportunity. Lastly, I hope we get to see Luke, Leia, maybe both of them. This could be like an end credit or something. I'd personally be hyped. That would be like the icing on the cake for me in terms of this show. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys thought of the episode. Any predictions you have, any theories you have for the season finale of Ahsoka. Drop a like on the video as well, sub to the channel if you haven't already, I really appreciate the support and thank you for your time.